Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. It's time once again for uh, we're in third age. We're going to be adding these purple Seven Wonders cards to our deck, and I think it's just going to keep flowing with the cards we have as it goes. Um, so pretty exciting. We're in third age. That opens things up in some ways, and it has these very potent cards. So we're going to see the cultures having a stronger impact. Um, as I was culling through this deck, I found uh, the Gamers Guild, which is a card in here, and it gave me an idea. So I'm going to make another rules change because I like it. Um, the Gamers Guild gives you an extra wreath per every three bucks you have. Now wreaths normally only, this this sort of tally I think would be at the end of the game normally, um, but I'm, it's going to be a constant thing. And I, you know, this is something I, I was thinking about maybe having it so that people could discard, uh, pay three coins for a wreath. But I think, you know, for every three coins they have, period, they're going to have a, a virtual wreath. Um, so that's something else I'm going to have to keep track of. But I think it'll make those coins ha uh, make a lot more sense than right now because they're just sitting on stacks of them and they're not doing anything. So maybe they'll have to um, allocate their coins to different different empires. That would be fun. Uh, but let's play. We have a lot to do. And I got I have a little bit of a time impetus on this game now. Um, I have a commitment for a game to, to play after this game. And I have people waiting on that. Um, not so much because they, they have to do some things on their end too. But I can't have this taking f several years. You know, I told them a couple months maybe. Um, but if I could get done sooner, that would be a bonus, you know. It's, it's a good, um, a good tactic in building perception. So when, when, when people, um, make judgment calls on things, they, it's very hard to do it in a sea of nothing. They have to find some sort of point with which to, um, compare that. So, um, uh, a trick that marketers will do is they'll say, say I, I read this in a book, and the, the example they used were coffee machines, and they had three different coffee machines they were selling. One was like the cheapo one, one was kind of the middle of the road one, which turns out is the one they actually wanted you to buy. The one was super expensive, but you, and, it, and it made like way more coffee than you would supposedly want, and you had to buy these special cartridges for it or something like that, and it was more expensive. And so, the whole reason the book points out that they ha even had the very expensive one is so that this middle one was a good deal. So if I can make it make this take less than two months from now, it's going to seem like I gave everyone a great deal. Got a nice fat stack of remainders here, uh, partially because we have one fewer player and I'm, I didn't call the deck of... Uh, like cards like this that say seven plus. I left them all in. All the cards are in. Probably more guilds are in than are supposed to be in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding. People just get a draw card every time. So hand should stay at about seven, which will give people extra options. Change the spirit of the seven wonders portion, but that'll give them more choices in terms of their culture. Uh, kind of leaves it so that there's less. Um, I don't know. Less, less of the scraping of the bottom, which is, which is what's been going on. Um, makes it so that, you know, one person can't just maintain some science dominance or, or wreath dominance like they have been able to so far. Finished with our production phase, and there's some interesting uh, behaviors to note. Um, most interesting is we have our first elephant on the map. It took a long time. Giraffe could have produced this elephant a long time ago, but she didn't bother because she felt she had India locked up. Um, so we had the, these kind of mirror positions here with um, uh, Flush in China and Giraffe in India. They had their, their kind of homeland. Flush was weaker in China than Giraffe in India, but they both were scoring a lot of points off of those respective um, sub-regions, I guess is what you'd call them in this game. Um, They've both been, uh, we're seeing indications of a different different response to the intrusion. So we had a new empire come here in Hyderabad, and a new one come in here in Shensi. Now granted, again, Flush's intrusion was, or Cowboy's intrusion in China was more vicious. One, because Flush is weaker, way back here in, in age. And two, because he took, 
you know, he appeared right where Flesh's capital was, which took away all his money. Um, then Flesh's, Flesh's intrusion here into India, much stronger than cowboys, um, has a giant holding a, a boulder over its head. Um, but Giraffe's a little more ready for it. Still, she's in tough straits. She could have maybe just decided to, to go away. Again, she wasn't very, very prepared to be attacked. Um, you know, all of her cities are kind of low. Even though she's in era three, her cities are still one. Um, I think she got hit by a sickness or something right before that, so there was some, some trouble. Anyway, upshot is Giraffe decided to produce. Flush did not, so that's that's kind of telly. I think in terms of how they're going to respond, whether they're going to stay and fight or not, it looks like Giraffe is. Over here, um, Flush is built back up, it's building back up, getting ready to you know, continue his push into the peninsula, perhaps. Um, Egyptians also produced the, um, the early fins. They are starting to look actually kind of scary. Um, they, they have the black counter set, which is the strongest in terms of number, uh, the numbers on there. And, you know, with all the trades they did last time, they have some more powerful units available to them. So they might be a contender in the region. Other news, the Saxons have their boats, so that's going to make things interesting. They can maybe, they'll have to push through Giraffe here. Actually, they won't. If they have twice as many boats as she has, they can just pa bypass her and not have to deal with it. Um, but if they, they, can, they can do an invasion on Britain soon if they want to. You know, they, it's slow going for them. They don't have a lot of land, so they don't get a lot of money. Since they're barbarians, they don't have to pay for their people, but they also get half income. So that's, that's what's going on. It's funny, there's no trading this turn, so we're going right to maneuver. And this is, you know, I don't know if this is a rhythm of the game or just a rhythm of me, um, but, you know, there's a lot of maneuvers this turn, weren't a lot last turn, a lot of trades last turn, not a lot of trades this turn. I think it's just more the, the geopolitical situation. You know, there's a lot of land that's opened up that people are going to, going to want to grab. We had a lot of people who were kind of stuck in the past that really needed to move up before they could do anything. Uh, anyway, the empires definitely have rhythms, and part of the, the way you play this game is you want to kind of, since you, you, you only have so many chits, you know, you want to get it so that your empires are asynchronous. Um, you know, they're, they each have their rhythm, but the rhythms, the beats don't land in the same place on each of the of your empires. Because if you do, you're going to have to use a wild card to um, do the same action twice with two different empires. And every time you do the same action, this, the same, same phase with two different empires, you lose a point. And we're actually going to have someone do that this, this turn phase here. So before we get into maneuvers, I want to talk about this results table, and I haven't thought a lot about this, but if you recall, um, I was having some troubles, I mean, I've, uh, this game takes me so long, and I, you know, I, I wish I could have devote all my time to just doing this, not really, I, I think it would be a terrible thing to watch if like, all I did was do this, but um, anyway, I haven't spent a lot of time thinking about this, but... On my way to playing today, I thought, you know what? I thought briefly about how to deal with the combat result table because there's these numbers higher than six and lower than six that I'd like to do. So I think the ways you can get bonuses, if you have a leader with a group, that's going to give you a bonus of one to your die roll. Um, if that leader is a strategist, that'll give them an additional bonus. And if they're a tactician, that'll give them an additional bonus. So there you have a potential for a positive three you know, in the best of cases, so you could have a 9. Probably not a 9+. plus. There might be other ways to get bonuses, too. Um, I haven't decided. Maybe if you have more of these... So here's tricky. I, I have, If you have more of these these swords, you get you can play cards, and the other person can't in the fight. But maybe it would be nice if you had more of those swords, you'd also get a bonus. I don't know. Um, penalties would be, you know, if the opponent has a leader. And then also their... Um, the terrain, I think I'm going to work that into there instead of in, uh, in terms of strength points. So right now, if you're attacking someone in mountains, they essentially get like three kind of phantom strength points that they get to add. 
Um, instead, I'm going to give it, make it so there, that's a minus three to your die roll unless you can deal with the mountains. There's some cards and things that can do that. So that's how I'll do it. I'm probably not going to work the shields into it right now, the, the swords and shields. I'm just going to have straight up leaders and everything like that. So we can have a potential positive nine, or you know, a potential nine, but you got to roll good and have like a perfect storm. Uh, not very likely, but that's okay. And the taker over of India or Flush's attempt to take over India is commencing. So here we have um, our first elephant in a fight. Now elephants, they negate the abilities uh, or the frontline powers of certain units. Flush is not attacking with any of those units though. He sent, he kept his horses going elsewhere. So he's going forward with swordsmen, rather strong swordsmen. It's a strong counter set that Flush is using, stronger than a giraffe's counter set. Um, so she's only gonna have, it's a two to one ratio. I do believe it's 13 to 7, um, no, 13 to 6, uh, Flush is plus 1 for having the giant with him, it's going to be cancelled by that um, city, so it's going to be straight roll here, in fact it seems like there's there might be an, a huge advantage to the defender with this, this method, I'm probably going to have to change it, that's what you get for not thinking about things, um, so we're in the 2 to 1 column here, Two, that's a bad roll for flush. D and E. D loses as many points as the defender lost. Uh, and D is the, yeah, so. So, two of the defenders. Flush is going to have to lose two guys, too. And we'll say it's something like that. There we go. So here we see it, how far the Amazonians, um, Runs Amazonians have spread. Poor cowboy here. He's maneuvered this turn as well, and he's already done it. He was planning on spreading into this area, the, the, the vacated Babylonian territory, but he finds himself caught in between um, both of Runs' forces. If they join together, he's going to be smushed in the process. Um, not sure what he's going to do there with that. I think he was just kind of hoping that that uh, Runt wasn't going to maneuver and he'd be able to take the mountains first. Here we see turn order was huge in this case. Since she got to maneuver first, she got the, the plump mountain terrain and as we've talked about, it's difficult to um, take someone down once they're in the mountains. Okay, and after Giraffes, Romans, who they do have that, they, they happen to get that Gamers Guild I talked about um, at the beginning of the video. That's That gives them essentially two virtual wreaths per per um, three coins they have so that's a pretty pretty decent deal they use that um, that cultural advantage that the money bought them to throw down an earthquake right here and a volcano here kinda chip away at runt a little bit despite that and despite everything else the game state hasn't really changed uh, you know we still have these two neck and neck getting two points a turn that's uh, Little Red and Flush. We have Cowboy pulling in five. No change there. Is, as long as people stay out of the New World, uh, he has it. Um, Runt and Giraffe are each scoring eight, so they're neck and neck. And then Melky is at a slow three. So if things keep this way, eventually Cowboy will surpass him. But that's you know that's a lot of points. But so we kind of have our our three a three tiered system. We have our our leaders, our people behind and our middle people. Only only thing that really changed is that Cowboy progressed because he has his Phoenicians had the, the science points. I'm not sure if that that in fact I, I'm sure that that's not enough of a bonus for the science just to get the free progression at the end. The trade in progress is such a huge way to progress that that's no longer um, so much of an advantage I guess. Um, so there was a, and I can't find my notebook, but when I find it, um, there was a, a thing I had with the science things that if you had the most of something, you would add something or other or some to, to one of your leader's stats. I think what I'm going to do instead is have the science cards always add to your leader's stats. So that, that should be kind of fun. You can kind of customize what sort of leaders you have and work with them via your science cards. So if you have you know, a certain amount of compass and square that that adds to some stat I forget what they are I haven't used it at all um, but you see I'm a very messy person and 
I don't know where that notebook is. So I'll have to find that. And then then be able to add that next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. 7x7 seven seven Aegis. Pope Plague.